Radio, a constantly changing art form. Marconi. Lakehurst, New Jersey. All the humanity. The Mercury Theater. This is Orson Welles, ladies and gentlemen. The New World Order. Hi, this is Casey Kasem. From that first broadcast, a medium that has been pruned, pulled, trimmed, winnowed, bonsai, and pruned and deposited here today. Ready to be moistened with the watering can of evolutionary jewel, this is the Dennis Miller Show. What's up, Hiroshi? Let's light this candle. Hey, folks, welcome to the Dennis Miller Show. I am the aforementioned Mr. Miller. How do I go an entire Winter Olympics in Canada, no less, and not see one appearance by Loverboy? Don't know what's wrong, (laughs) but something's up. All right, what can we talk? Let's talk about the Olympics, folks. Jeez, that was an unbelievable hockey game. I mean, I know I'm American, but I have to say, maybe that worked out. The absolutely best way it could. I'd like to get your uh, feelings on the Olympics in general and uh, the hockey game, 866-509-RANT. If you've got a, if you've got a uh, take on it, you can call in right now. And, uh, you know, even the false victory at the end, or not false victory by the Canadians. I mean, the, the United States had their moment in the sun where they scored with like 20 seconds left. J.P. Parisi, because I swear to God, when I was a young kid, and I used to watch J.P. Parisi's old man was from somewhere else. I guess he must have come here, and the kid was born in the United States when he was playing in the NHL. But, God, he kept banging. It was so exciting. So to pull it out with 23 seconds left. And then my main concern as they went into the overtime was, please don't let anybody have a Bill Buckner moment. I always think about Buckner and, uh, God, what a gamer he was, 2,850-some hits and uh, to be remembered for that ball going through his legs. And, and you can't even say, well, that's, uh, you know, that, yeah, it shouldn't be. That's unfair. It's not. Un- it's just the deal of history. Scott Norwood, Bill Buckner, some of these guys get saddled. That poor Donnie Morcat who gave up the homer. Uh, it, it, I, I think it eventually he took his life over that. So all I was thinking as it went into the overtime was, well, uh, if Canada wins, it's their home sports. So I'd be happy for them. Plus, they seem like nice people. If the United States wins, they're my home country. I, I, I'd love to see them win. But whoever wins, I hope there's no moment where somebody gacks it. I hope somebody takes it and seizes it. And, you know, to have the best player in the world, Sidney Crosby, um, as soon as he jumped that, uh, he was on the boards and he jumped over. I knew he was going to get that feedback. I just didn't know he could use that angle. And he whipped it. He had wrists that are just absolutely unbelievable, like those old women who play that thing on the uh, 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 concentration or whatever it is on the midway down in Atlantic City where they just throw that ball up and their wrists are real whippy over the years. And he whipped it in there, and it was absolutely perfect. A class kid. So I, I got to say, I think the uh, city of Vancouver pulled out a great Olympics. I mean, it came from a weird place at the beginning, but stuff's going to happen. I mean, in any sort of endeavor, you're going to periodically just the math dictates something's going to happen. The track was fast. The kid was a relative neophyte, and he passed. And, uh, you know, it's a horrible memory, and uh, we feel badly for his parents. Imagine packing your kid off to participate in the Olympics, for God's sakes, and finding out that he's uh, he's died. So it's a, it's a rough place to start. And then there's the weather, and then there's the thing that doesn't come up. But you look back on it after last night's closing ceremony, And it all seems like a moot point, doesn't it? It seems like any of our endeavors. You try something and uh, you hope it goes perfectly. How often does it go perfectly in your life? I don't know. It just doesn't seem to occur that often. So you have a couple gacks. The whole world's watching. And you can see that what we have become is uh, is gold medalists in second guessing. My God, the press is just poised there, waiting to just, uh, it's, it's like you've uh, you've filled something too far and there's a surface tension in the press and they're just ready to come over and start streaming down the side of the cup when they think it's gone poorly. But I got to give a thumbs up to the people of Canada. I think they pulled off. I know they were nice. Trust me, I've been up to Vancouver a lot. They're the sweetest people, so I know they were accommodating. And then when you put the icing on the cake, it is unbelievable to me 
that uh, out of all the Olympics ever, the Winter Olympics ever, they win the most gold medals by a country ever. Now, I think back to the Wehrmachter that was the, the USSR back in the 70s and the 60s and that, and you think, my God, how did they not win the most? Now, I know there's probably some new events now. They didn't have half pipe. By, they, you know, it's tough to think of uh, Nikita Khrushchev working the triple dolly in the uh, half pipe. But uh, there were more medals available now. But nonetheless, to have 14 to win the most, and the most that a home country has ever won, the most indeed that any country has ever won, I think is a nice salute to the people of Canada. I think the, the uh, Olympic gods, as it were, were looking down and they were pleased with what they did so all in all a great olympics loved the big beaver last night at the uh closing ceremony you gotta love a big beaver and uh, i think that was a queen song and uh they, all in all uh, a fun fortnight thank you canada it was uh it was a fun ride